Thanks so much for tuning in to today's drawing for adults class brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library and the Ann Arbor Art Center. My name is Peyton Cook and I teach these classes that are typically held at the downtown branch, but because of our current times, we are offering our class online. So today's class is gonna be a slightly different layout, so I hope you enjoy it and um, definitely leave comments if you'd like and to share your work online, you can use the hashtag art at AADL and I'd love to see it. You can always tag me on social media as well and I'd love to see what you do today. So this is the beginning of a new series that we're going to be doing using watercolor and ink. Now if you don't have watercolors, I want to just show you this little set. This is Windsor Newton's Cotman Watercolor Travel Set. I think it's a great set um, for beginners especially or even for intermediates. Um, because it has so many colors in a small little compact travel set. So if you don't have watercolors, I recommend this, but honestly, you can just go to the store and pick up a small set of inexpensive watercolor set, uh, watercolor set just to get you started, and it will work just fine. So we'll also be using ink pens. Now, I love Pigma Micron ink pens. I appreciate the different sizes that they come in. You can see here that the smaller the size, the smaller the number, the smaller the point the tip is on the pen, and the larger the number, the thicker the line is. So it gives you the opportunity to really create a variety of line weights, which is really important. So you can have some thick lines, some thin lines, and it allows you to really create a lot of fine detail with those smaller pens. But even if you don't have these pens or you don't wanna go and buy some pens, look around the house. You might have some brands of pens that are different from these that will still work. For example, Pilot makes a really good pen. Even a thin, skinny Sharpie can work okay, though sometimes they bleed a little bit. So you do wanna take that into consideration. But even a, just a regular, plain ballpoint pen can suffice. All right, so as I mentioned, today is gonna to be a little bit different than the typical layout, and that I will do a time-lapse video of a digital drawing that I'm gonna do where I can show the whole thing in process, but I'm also gonna show these quick little pictures here to give you a snapshot of what this looks like in process with real, actual watercolors. So we're going to be doing the watercolor portion first and what I want you to do is simply take some colors that are colors that kind of represent the flowers that you're going to be painting or drawing and choose those colors and just sort of lightly blob those colors and it doesn't have to be anything exact. And after you do that, you know, let that stage dry. So wait of several minutes for it to be dry to the touch. And then you can go in and add a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture, maybe a few more colors as you can see here. So I encourage you to pause the video to do these steps and go step by step with me um, because really developing this watercolor portion is really important um, for the success of your uh, artwork. Now, it's up to you. You could have literally kept it at that very first picture that I had and drawn ink on top of that. You could have left it at the second stage. Um, here is this third stage here that has obviously a lot more detail and it looks more like flowers. And here's my final stage here now where I have even more detail uh, painted in. So this is just an example of showing the different stages. You do not have to develop it this far. Note that if you do, it's absolutely fine, but you won't have as much maybe detail that you really need to add in with your ink pens. So it's up to you. You can still see I have a lot of lighter parts that are simply just washes. So you don't have to add a ton of detail, but you can if you want to with your paints. It's up to you. So if you're more of a painter, more of a drawer, what would challenge you the best? So I just spent a lot of time doing the watercolor there. Um, and then the next stage, of course, would be going in with the ink pens. Now I'm actually go going to show you 
um, a digital drawing of start to finish with watercolor and ink, but I wanted to show those process pictures of the watercolor part first, just because I think there's more to that in terms of layering and uh, getting all of that laid down first. All right, so here's the digital painting slash drawing that I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be doing this start to finish so you can really see the way that it progresses over time. So I'm starting with some simple little blobs, some washes. You can see how this is a little different on digital versus, versus um, regular paper, watercolor on paper, but I would recommend starting off with maybe some wet on wet approaches to watercolor paint. Meaning you're gonna brush on some water onto your paper and then you brush on your paint. Okay, so you're putting the wet paint on your wet paper and that will allow for that paint to just really spread and bleed and look super cool. So here's a quick example of what this will look like as I would draw more ink in. Um, I just wanna show you that. So for those of you that are ready to go ahead and get started, you can see how I would be laying this out. But what I'm actually gonna do is pause on that ink and keep going here with the watercolors so that you get a better representation. Here's the wet on wet kind of look where it really bleeds. It doesn't have really clear, distinct edges. And here, I will mess up there, but we'll just cover that up real quick. It's a lot easier to uh, cover up mistakes with digital art versus in real, not real life, but in real materials, I guess. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna keep adding in some more plant floral life, um, floral like, I should say. Uh, imagery here that's very blobby to so think about it kind of like you don't have to be super detailed here but like you saw in my uh, actual painting you can get pretty detailed it's just up to you if you want to keep it looser and leave the details up to the ink pens or if you want to kind of accent your painting with the ink pens to so just kind of you know add some dark crisper lines um, but for the most part you want it to be predominantly um, really, I guess, painting focused. So it's really up to you how you want to approach this. But you can hang out and watch this as it progresses with the watercolors, and then we'll jump in and I'll hop back on uh, with the details about how I go about doing the ink part in just a moment. So you can see here how many layers of paint I end up adding onto this. And now I'm gonna start going in with my ink pens to create more texture and more line work. So I'm keeping it still really loose, really quick. Obviously this is a time-lapse video, so you're not seeing this in real time. This would have taken me much longer than just the several minutes that you're, you're watching here. But, um, but you can see how loose I'm keeping it. So I'm just kind of getting the general line the general form that I see when I'm looking at these flowers. So I definitely recommend, you know, going outside, taking some photos of some flowers, or maybe even just sitting outside to sketch if it's nice outside. You can also just pull up 
a beautiful picture of a flower bouquet on the internet and draw from that. That is absolutely acceptable. Um, just, you know, have fun creating it. Um, I do encourage you to use lots of sketchy loose lines. Go over your lines a few times to really add some thicker lines, especially if you don't have thick pins as well as thin pins. If you don't have that variety, just keep tracing over your lines and you can really see how that will add a lot of depth to your overall drawing. really loose it looks really great so I hope you have fun with this and you create something really beautiful and be sure to tune in next time